It's four months since the outbreak of the coronavirus and almost two months since the first case was discovered in Nigeria. We wonder how is this virus affecting the security infrastructure of the nation? And in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, we really are we're fighting still the insurgency of Boko Haram and ISWAP. This is Plus Politics and I am Benny Ark. It's almost two months after the first case of coronavirus was discovered in Nigeria and 254 cases later and lockdown of major states in the country. We wonder how is this pandemic affecting the security infrastructure of the nation? In the studio with me is security analyst and expert Dixon Osage. Thank you for joining us this evening, Thank Dixon. You. Thank you, Benny. All right. you? And also live on Skype this evening with us, also security expert Onyekachi. Thank you, Onyekachi, for joining us this evening on Plus TV um, this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Benny. Now, in, in, in the wake of the lockdown, how integral do we need to be to consider our security architecture and structure? Uh, well, uh, you know, the lockdown came as a surprise. Yes. And uh, Nigerians were not prepared for that. Uh, the president just came on air and uh, uh, gave a 24 hours notice that everybody will be, uh, everyone's rights will be suspended because when we talk about emergency, we're talking about the suspension of human rights. Yes. Uh, so our rights were being suspended in the past two weeks and uh, we never prepared for that because we only anticipated that uh, uh, such, occur such act is going to occur. And uh, we have a very poor contingency plan here in Nigeria. Uh, Nigeria is not a country that is qualified for an emergency uh, 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 situation, okay. uh, or what we call a, a state of emergency, uh, because we don't have the infrastructure in place, we don't have the amenities. Uh, in a civilized country where you have the electricity industry uh, to keep into your tax 24-7, you have the uh, medical facility 24-7, uh, you could call a state of emergency a short state. But here in Nigeria, uh, you could see that the state of emergency is not as effective as that of, uh, as declared by the president. So okay. in the nearest time, I think uh, uh, we should try to build our infrastructure because uh, this coronavirus is hitting mm -hmm. us so hard as a wake-up call for okay. us to be prepared. Uh, because when disaster, when disaster strike, the time to prepare has passed. And we were really uh, taken uh, surprise by surprise uh, with this uh, coronavirus. So okay. it's a wake-up call to Nigerians and our leaders to understand that uh, this country belongs to us and we're going nowhere. Uh, you could see uh, one or two people uh, that were indisposed. But adventure, if not for coronavirus, uh, one or two of the high-profile Nigerians would have been flown abroad. And some of them are in Lagos here taking treatment. So uh, I think uh, it's a uh, worrisome situation and Nigeria should be prepared for any unforeseen situation. All right, Mr. Adeko Onyekachi, I come to you now. I mean, how threatened is our internal security in the light of the pandemic, <coughs> COVID-19? Um, so, so, yes, I agree that uh, perhaps we didn't prepare on time for the pandemic. I would also argue that I'm not sure any country had enough time to prepare for the pandemic. Even America is also struggling and adjusting their plan as they go. So uh, it's, it's, shown, it's shown clearly the fault lines that exist within our security structure. Uh, the police are having a very difficult day trying to enforce the lockdown in Lagos. Uh, there's, there's good enforcement in Abuja from the reports we're getting. But once you begin to leave the metropolis and the city center, uh, again, it brings to the fore the issues that we have been talking about. How do you enforce a lockdown uh, of 200 and something million plus people with barely 1 million plus um, security forces? The military, just about 100,000. The police, just barely 300,000. The DSS, NSCDC, uh, we still don't have enough. We don't have enough. So for those of us in Lagos, you can see clearly that the police are spent in the daytime. Anytime from the hours of 8 to 8, eight to let's say 4. I mean, they are used up. Uh, they can't do much. Anything from 5, 6, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a struggle. Because what we would have expected to see is that there would have been rotation. Uh, maybe 8 hours rotation, as the IGPD said last year that he was hoping that the police would begin to rotate their personnel 
on an eight hours rotation. Eight hours rotation would almost mean that you need to double, if not triple, your personnel strength to achieve eight hours rotation. So okay. it stretched us. Um, that's the impact to our security architecture. It also shows that um, the assumption that only the states would, should be responsible for security, that assumption no longer holds water. You have a private security industry that has almost 1.5 million people employed within the industry. Perhaps we need to begin to look at some more collaboration with the private security sector, particularly in the case of pandemic or emergency response preparedness. So uh, government cannot do it alone. Um, and the way the whole situation is being managed also um, perhaps um, brings that argument again to the fore and say, let's look at the way security is being run in the country. Okay. Let's have some hard conversations and let's begin to lean a bit more towards the private sector for support in critical times like this. All right. Now, D Dixon, this is, a, this is um, the denial of the lockdown. And um, some Lagos residents are already um, arguing and contemplating the fact that they might have to defy this order if the lockdown should continue past its time. And we, we heard of some shootings that happened in Kaduna State. Now, let, let's begin to look at the, the pros and cons of, of this lockdown. And should they go beyond the expected time? What, what are the pros and cons to this lockdown? Uh, you see, uh, Nigerians believe that uh, if they don't die by poverty and the spirit of uh, uh, insecurity in Nigeria, uh, COVID-19 will not kill us because uh, we've seen a um, worse situation in this country more than COVID-19. Yeah. And uh, looking at the lockdown, I don't think the lockdown is going to sustain in the next uh, two weeks because uh, nobody will want to die uh, without uh, his consent, you know. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that Nigeria are not going to uh, accept such a lockdown uh, because our government has never given us that facility to enjoy this lockdown. Uh, and this is a very good one for them to understand that uh, we need to start developing our home. We need to start developing our country. Nice. Uh, I, 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 there was a time I was in the United Kingdom and a letter was sent to my friend and the letter is all about a notification for suspension of their electricity for just 15 minutes. Yes. I was amazed. But here in Nigeria, they will suspend your electricity for three months without your consent and much bills. And all these things have psychological effects to Nigerians. You know, we, we're suffering from a lot of psychological uh, effects, emotional effects, and the spate of uh, insecurity as well. Look at the Cardinal shooting, for example. Yes. Our security agency has been overwhelmed, you know, because uh, the uh, uh, criminal element has taken the vulnerability of our security agents to continue to strike and strike and they keep succeeding. Yeah, you just say overwhelmed. I mean, but I mean, they're supposed to have gotten trained for this, for this kind of emergencies. And if they're overwhelmed now, we see <coughs> cases of constant harassment and brutalization of innocent citizens who, for the sakes of hunger, every day step out because they need to eat. Like you rightly said, we're a nation where people actually live from hand to mouth every day. Okay. Some people's sustenance is daily. Okay. You know, and so where would they build training off for such emergency? And what should we begin to critically look at? Very good. Uh, yeah. Benny, that's a very uh, intelligent question. Yes. Uh, because, uh, you know, sometimes people just feel that uh, our security agency will just, uh, you know, overturn the situation of the country in, uh, within uh, 24 hours or a day. Uh, the, just a foundational problem. We have foundational problem. Uh, like when I was in the military training uh, uh, academy, uh, the, what I was trained in my own uh, institution then, when I was a soldier, uh, it was that I should protect the territorial integrity of my fatherland and uh, neutralize the enemy of the states. Those are the two things I could even remember that I was trained about to protect the integrity. But it's regrettable we see a lot of soldiers uh, carrying out a, a animal behavior, shooting uh, innocent Nigerians in the spate of this COVID-19, yeah. police brutality, police harassment. That is the highest pit of unprofessionalism. You know, the problem is this. We don't have effective punishment uh, 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 procedures within the security agencies. If you commit such kind of offense or whatever the case may be, immediate dismissal should be awarded to people uh, who think they can abuse the Nigerian citizen. Because because these citizens are your friend. They are the ones you are trained to protect. You are not trained to come and harass them. And any citizens that are being harassed by the Nigerian police or Nigerian army, they reserve that right to go to the nearest police station and report that case. And if that case is being reported and the security agency do not take action, they should write a report and publicize it because we must stop this uh, uh, citizen's harassment. That's animal behavior. It's not done in any part of the world. You don't harass the citizen. Yes. You are trained to protect. Oh, I, I, I come to you with the same question now. I mean, some people in Lagos yeah. already saying they will defy the order should it go beyond the, the stated time and you must have heard about the, the shootings that took place in, in Kaduna and more now how do you react to this as a security expert and in the light of our military and law enforcement agency not being able to handle the whole situation given the fact